are there sections of the Pentagon and our military and industrial complex that are rogue that would just be able to say like we're going to you know we're back in Israel that they're essentially part of the IDF almost that they're just like we're going to give Israel what they need. I well, mean, like, I think could could they they launch do something like this without the authority? Like, well, who in the State Department or in the Pentagon would say like okay, we'll let Israel you know use our uh, airstrip or refueling to carry out this assassination? Right. Um, against somebody that that the United States, that the current administration desperately wants a, a ceasefire deal. They would love it if Israel would I say, like, instead of trying to kill this guy, sit down, talk to him, stop right. the bloodshed. So it right. stops making it look so bad for us. Right. Right. Why would they why would the United States has, doesn't want this to happen except yeah. certain neocon yeah, individuals right. that want right. to go to war with Iran? Yeah. You no, know, no, there like, are obviously a lot of people in the Pentagon and, you know, in the Congress and the State Department that are itching for war with Iran. And this has been true for a long time. Um, you know, the, these people have been kept at bay over the past couple of decades, uh, but they're there. They're always there and they're always looking for a chance. Um, you know, I wouldn't say like there's parts of the, of the uh, let's say, U.S. power structure that are under the control of the IDF. It's almost like a good, like, and basically, the whole thing is, I, you know, it's an exaggeration to say under the control of the IDF, but it's all IDF influence and their IDF connections, you know, throughout the system. You know, we saw that in the run up to the Iraq war with Wolf Lewis, for example. And uh, who was the other guy? Yeah. But anyway, they were dual citizens that were involved, that were absolutely, you know, instrumental in bringing about the, the Iraq war. Um, and then, you know, what we have in the Congress, we have these guys, march congressmen walk, marching around in the IDF uniform. It's not like, you know, the influence of the IDF is being hidden. It's there. It's it's mm. throughout the power structure. But yes, you know, there, it's, there still is that resistance, you know, up to a point. Yeah, we'll do whatever you want, but please, no war with Iran. There still are those, you know, those people, the cooler heads are still in the majority, but maybe just barely. Now, so I don't know. So, you know, the question was, did somebody go rogue? I hope, well, you know, I don't know that we've reached that point. Uh, but, I, you know, if we haven't, I think maybe one day we'll see that. You know, who knows? Right. Well, I mean, maybe it doesn't even really matter at this point. I think Iran and Hezbollah will retaliate, right? They have both said they would. What does this mean now? Is this the beginning? You know, this is what, is this what Netanyahu always wanted, right? right. He wants... He wants a, re a, re a reaction, and now this is good. He might get it this time. Yeah. I think, um, but... yeah, that's right. We, this is kind of the, we remember back in, I guess it was April, probably the beginning of April, when um, Israel struck the, the consular building, the Iranian consular building, in clear violation of international law and killed those, um, those Iranian generals. And then Iran just had to respond. Well, you know, we came very close to an all-out conflict, but we just narrowly averted it, right? It was a very carefully mm. calibrated response. Um, but at the time, I remember us saying that, you know, it's going to happen again. It's not like Netanyahu said, oh, damn, I, I failed. Well, I guess that doesn't work. We'll do something else. No, he's going to try it again. That's what I thought back then. And here he is. I think that's, we just see the second attempt to, to uh, you know, light the fire, you know, to, to uh, start mm -hmm. a regional, so, regional war, right? I mean, we keep on striking the the tinder box, you know, right. and to and get yeah. sparks, and it's going to catch eventually. Do you think I, that we were, it's caught right now? Like, do do you expect a retaliation from uh, uh, Hezbollah and Iran? Do you think that they will strike within Haifa, Tel Aviv, uh, in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, it's hard to know. You know that they again; these are actually Hezbollah and Iran. You know, in in Contrary to what so many Americans think, you know, they're not wild-eyed fanatics. They're actually very sane, very rational people. And they, they're in a bit, very difficult position. You can see there is a need to retaliate, right? You see, they, this kind of, these deeds can't go unpunished. It shows weakness if we don't respond. That's what they got to be thinking. But at the same time, they really don't want an all-out war because they know what it could mean. You know, it can mean the destruction of, of Lebanon. The, the Israelis keep on saying, I remember them saying this way back in you know, the, the previous um, 
maybe it was back in 2006 or earlier. Um, we're going to bomb them back to the Stone Age, and that was a threat. And they did a great deal. They didn't quite do that, but they did a great deal of damage, you know, a, a great deal of de devastation. In Iran, you know, Iran is a country that survived a horrible war, the Iran Iraq War, millions of dead on their side. And then it's been subject to all these sanctions. And it's just only recently that they begin, have begun to turn the corner and you know, their economy is starting to grow. You know, people have some hope in the future. They don't want to have an all out war, right? So they, they are in a very difficult position. They, and we'll see how they calibrate the response. You know, maybe they go manage to avert one again. And oddly enough, the U.S. might be an ally, just as they were actually in the, the previous incident, if you remember. It was actually the, the Iran communicated to the U.S. ahead of time. We're going to do this. We're not going to strike military targets. It's a kind of a show of force, but it's not a real attack. Okay, understand that, that there was actually communication between the U.S. and Iran, because the U.S. also does not want an all out war. And we may see the same thing happen again. Yeah, I, we keep on saying that, but it's just, I just don't understand why it, it, why we can't just say no to Israel. Why can't yeah, we just I say, know. just stop? Well, just, right. it's, just, it's so frustrating. Right. We play all these complicated, yeah. dangerous right, games right, 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 right. when the easiest solution right. is just. Just stop. Right, Just exactly. Stop. Right, you know? exactly. And, you know, you know, what kind of ally? Israel is often incorrectly described as an ally. We don't have any kind of treaty with them, you know, mutual defense treaty. But they're, we describe them as an ally. But what kind of ally is always bringing you to the brink of this? This is, Israel clearly is not an asset you know, for the U.S. in the Middle East. It's a terrible liability. But, you know, we're, you know, this is this is the mm -hmm. U.S. today, and not just today, but for the last few decades. <laughs> the tail, right. the tail wagging yeah, the I dog. Mean, I, I feel like it's only the United States, really, that is you know fully backing Israel, and the rest of the world is hating us for it because of what we're allowing Israel yeah. to do. I think you would have to also you know, say and it's, Britain, Germany, you know, and and yeah. most of the Western European countries I, to some extent, but I not feel fully, not quite like we are. Right. I feel it's different in, in Western Europe because I think most of the people in Western Europe don't have that same right. support. There's right. they don't, there's not that Christian Zionism that exists. Exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, that's that's a U.S. phenomenon. Um, and so right. and, 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 and the U.S. Right. is the Western Europe follows what what the U.S. Yeah. does. So it's, it's just right. that's what it and is. It, they're they're just at the trough, you know, the U.S. trough as well. And so they, they'll just listen to, to what we right. say. And the U.S. You know, is Christian and, Zionism, but it's also Jewish influence, you know, Jewish money. That it's, you know, it's obviously not all Jews that we're talking about, but Jewish Zionism is a very, very powerful force, and more powerful in the U.S. than any Western European country. So it's both of those kind of Zionisms. Um, yeah, you know, to give an example that supports what you just said, there was a poll that came out recently and it showed that in the UK, um, actually support for the Palestinians was uh, was almost exactly equal to support for Israel within the population. There's, a, there's, a, there's maybe better than half who just don't take sides, but perhaps 20% were for pro-Palestinian, 20% pro-Israel. Now in the US, it's more like, you know, 30% or 32% versus 8% or something, you know, or maybe 30 to 10. There's, there's a very, that's actually an improvement over the past years. There is a growing support for Palestine that hardly exists at all, but it's still very much. Uh, but then when you get to Europe, and I think probably like uh, the UK is probably one of the most pro-Israel countries in Western Europe. You know, most other countries that clearly, I think it would be the support for Palestine it far exceeds the support for Israel. I know it's actually the same. Um, survey was done in Russia and support for Palestine was much stronger in Russia than support for Israel. And I think it was something like four to one in favor of Palestine. 